Okay. This afternoon, I'm going to talk about inviting. Inviting. How to get people to take a look at your opportunity. How to get people to see your product. How to get people to understand that there may be a better way for them. I'm going to talk about this in a number of different forms. Before I do that, I've got to comment on one thing. When I started off with Network Marketing Pro, it was March of 2009. And there were a lot of people really, really nervous of should they plug their people into this group? Would it be safe? And that concern was actually a valid concern because, frankly, every other generic network marketing trainer, ambassador, whatever, had at one time or other come back out of retirement and started a company or did something and made a bunch of people mad. So, at the be you know, a lot of people were like really, really nervous. Eric's going to build this huge list and he's going to start his own company. I just know it. Eric's going to you know, go to some other company. You know, he's made a few mistakes over the course of his career. He'll probably repeat them as he moves forward. And I was okay with people being concerned because here's what I saw happen at, uh, at our events. Here's the growth curve of our, event, our events. The first one was 200 people, then 400, then 800, then 4,000 last year, and approximately 8,000 this year. Okay? But here's been how it's happened. People come the first time by themselves. They're not bringing their team. They're not going to risk it. They got to make sure, is this going to be safe? So they come by themselves and they just watch. Like, huh. After a day or two, they're like, this is okay. I'm not totally all the way there yet, but I'm going to take all this information. I'm going to bring it back to my team. I'm going to look like a hero. Fine. Cool. Love it. Then the next year, they bring their lieutenants. They bring their key inner circle. Because they can't promote it to everybody else because the inner circle's nervous too. So they bring the inner circle and say, okay, what do you guys think? What do you guys, you know, should we promote? What, what should we do? And then typically year three, they say, okay, let's go. So some of you are on year three and you have 200, 300, 400 people here in your group. Some of you are here year one and you're by yourself and you're taking notes and making sure this thing's legit. And by the way, I have yet to receive one uh, report of cross-recruiting, not one, as we've gone through this event so far. So that makes me happy. So just, I, I need you to hear me, I've, I have to say this probably every two to three months for my whole five plus years in doing this. I am permanently and forever retired from the field, as from being a distributor with any company, to I'm not going to be affiliated with any company directly when it comes to being a stockholder, an owner, a board member, or any of those things. I'm here to be an ambassador and a friend and maybe a bridge builder. And hopefully together we can set some standards to raise the bar together and we can work on some things together and we can do better as a profession together. But it will never ever happen. And what I try to tell the people who are still nervous, what I try to tell them, here's one way to be the most hated man on earth. You may have I said, thank you for coming. I would like to introduce you to my new opportunity. I would like to sign you up for it. I'd be the most hated guy on planet Earth. I'd just never do it. I'm, in, I'm having the time of my life. And for the people who are nervous, I, I'm, I'm convinced when I'm 80, 30 years from now, people are going to say, he's going to do it. It's going to happen anytime. I'm telling you, I know. It's, he's just been setting this up for 35 years. But, and that's okay. I don't mind. I don't mind. But I do want you to understand this, okay? And I know that's why you're here, and I know that some of you are in year one, some year two, you know, some year three, you got bigger groups. Some are can't wait to bring more people next year, and we're going to try and cram in as many people as we can for next year in order to be able to make that happen. But I just want you to know, I'm your friend, I'm your biggest fan, 
and I'm going to do everything I can to marshal all the resources together to create a new standard when it comes to training and information and communication. Okay? Fair enough? All right. Love you too, man. I'm a big believer in visually putting something in your brain. I saw this picture in this room long before it was reality. I saw it. I knew exactly what it looked like. And I will tell you, I have a picture in my mind of where it's going to be in a few years. It's not in this arena in a few years. It's in a much bigger one. I have a vision for this. I have a vision for doing it in several locations around the world. I have a vision for us rising as a profession together all over the world and doing amazing things, not being all the friendly fire falling away and everybody locking arms. You know, so I want you to think about that, not from my perspective, but from your perspective. When you look at your company convention, I want you to look at that room, take a mental picture of that room and say, okay, I can see 50% of that room being in my group. I can see 80% of that room being in my group. I can see doing a breakout training that's as big as the company's convention. I can see it. Now, it doesn't have to start there. Five years ago, we started with 200. Guess how you grow? Provide massive value and don't keep score. Provide massive value, provide massive value, over deliver, over deliver, over deliver. Make it worth so much that everybody says, oh my gosh, I have to be able to get more of this. Provide massive value and then more will come the next year. Provide massive value, more will come the next year. Do better. Is anybody here that was here five years ago, has been to all five, anybody? Two, four, not very many, but you've seen how many people have been to three or more. Have we gotten better? Yeah, we keep getting better. We're going to keep getting better. And wait till I tell you about next year. I'm not going to tell you until tomorrow, but it's going to blow your minds. We're going to take it up. Here's the thought. Getting a mental picture of what the next level looks like for you. Write something down in your notes. Next level. Next level. What is required for you to go to the next level? What do you need to learn for you to go to the next level? How do you need to think for you to go to the next level? What kind of a team do you need to attract for you to go to the next level? How much are you willing to invest in your development in going to the next level? What's your budget for personal growth for the next 12 months, and what do you think it should be? What should, do you have a budget for personal growth? Well, I bought a book. Okay. If there are events that would serve your personal growth needs, should you go? Yes. You ask the million dollar earners, how much they spend on personal growth, how much they spend on coaching, how much they spend in the biggest seminars in the world trying to become better, work on their own skills. It's significant. I would bet that every seven-figure earner has at least a five-figure personal development budget per year. At least $10,000 a year they're spending on going to an event or learning something or getting a home study something or, you know, putting themselves in an environment in order to be able to develop their skills. Here's what I'd like you to do. Just think about a number. As far as, I believe the best investment on planet Earth, when you heard me talking at, on Wall Street, on, in the movie, the best investment in, in the world is in you. If you take a little bit of money, put it into your career, your development, think about the compound return on that investment inside of the network marketing profession. That's not true in other professions, but inside of network marketing, it's direct. 
and it's exponential. So I just want you to think about that. Write that down. What do you think a budget should be? And next to that number, what is your vision for what your income's going to be in network marketing? And then ask the question, is my investment in my growth proportionate to my goals? Some of you would do well to go to a Tony Robbins event. Some of you would do well to go learn how to be a better speaker. Some of you would do well to learn how to develop certain aspects of yourself. Some of you would do well with some image consulting. Some of you would do well. Seriously, that's no joke. Some of you would do well to get some professional photographs taken to show the world that you're a professional. Some of you would do well to have a video created to tell the story of what's going on and create some branding of what's going on in the world today. Some of you would do well to be able to say, look, I'm a pro, I'm the product. So what am I doing to make my product more, more valuable so it lines up with my ultimate goals, okay? And I will tell you most people, the investment that they're willing to make in relation to their ultimate income goals are way, way, way out of whack. And you need to think about it. It's just something to think about, okay? All right. Let's talk about inviting. Before we do, do we have, um, is Steel around? Do you know if Steel's around? Can anybody tell me if Steel's around? Just holler if you know. Cash, is Steel around? Huh? Tell him I need the Ronin. He'll know what he means. I want to do a network marketing pro show. Is that okay? I want to do it with you guys just like quiet in the background without saying anything. And then I'll do the show and then we'll turn around and shock everybody. It'll be kind of fun. All right. Once he gets that, let me know. All right, inviting. Let me give you some principles on how to invite. This is the gateway skill to network marketing. Gateway. If you can't get people to take a look at your product or your opportunity, you cannot win. You can't move forward. It's the gateway skill. Most people get bound up with fear. They're afraid of what people are going to think. They're afraid of what people are going to say. They're going to afraid that they're going to embarrass themselves. They, they, they go try it once or twice and they get shot down and they say, oh, I don't want to go out there anymore. This is too scary. This has to be mastered. And I've got some interesting things to talk to you about today. Here's the goal. Make sure you write this down. The goal is not to sign up a customer. The goal is not to sign up a distributor. The goal is understanding and education. Education and understanding. That's the only goal. Getting somebody to try your product is just part of accomplishing your goal of education and understanding. That's it. Getting somebody to hear your story is just part of the process to get them to understand. Because that's all we want to do. And if we did more of this, we're going to have much more people feel good about network marketing. If we're just trying to help them understand, not trying to get them. It's not like hunting, it's like farming. We're not trying to get them. Hey, I got a prospect, they're in my sights. Focus, focus, bam! Got him. Prospect is looking down and there's like the little red laser beam. And you're going, this isn't fun. Calling this opportunity? People are human sensors. They can tell when you're trying to get them versus when you're trying to help them. 
They can tell when you're trying to close them versus trying to educate them. They can tell, and they don't like it. Richard will tell you, out and he does his super MLM man, he goes out and there's a, he's asking people about it. And all the stuff that comes out comes from how we invite. Most of the negative stuff comes from how we invite. We're out there passing out business cards at funerals. <laughs> Let's meet when they serve cake in the corner. So excited they just can't stand it. Right? In times that are just not appropriate. And it's clear. Like Richard said so well in the documentary, they get clingy. No, no, you need to do this. Please, don't say no. That would be terrible. We do that with our family. We do that with our friends. We do that with total strangers. We get really aggressive sometimes. How do you like this lousy job? Serving tables and you're 40, how's that working out for you? I'm exaggerating a little. A little. How many times do you need to be approached before you say, whoa, wait a minute. And the common denominator is what, is it one of those things? Because everybody that's come at me that way has one of those things behind door number two. So, goal is education and understanding. The goal is with a big heart and with stories to help somebody understand what it is that we have. And here's the other really important thing. It's important that you're not emotionally attached to the outcome. I want to share with you, you might like it, you might not. You might see it, you might not. I'm okay either way. It's all right, no problem. But I think you'll find some value in it. And then tell a story. Then show them what you have. Then set it up in order to be able to do that, okay? Now, if you're not emotionally attached, and I understand at the beginning it's really hard not to be emotionally attached. Because here's what happens when you first join network marketing 95% of the time. You join, it costs $500 to join, you got some sample products, but here's why you joined. You didn't join to build a career, you didn't join to develop some skills, you didn't join because you want to be an entrepreneur. You join because in your mind you could think of five, six people that would probably do this too. That's why you joined, be honest. The moment you said, okay, here's my credit card, is the moment that list of candidates in your mind got long enough. When you thought of other people that might do this too, that's when people join. So what you have, it's like a, it's not a business, it's a lottery ticket. And it's like, it's got five scratch-offs on it. And these are the five prospects that you're thinking in your mind are going to do this for sure. So here's what happens when you, when, if you're emotionally attached to those five, you view every one of those five as 20% of your future. That's how you view it, so you're so desperate. You go to the one that's probably going to do this for sure, your best friend. You go to your best friend and say, hey, I got this great thing, we're going to make millions, it's going to be unbelievable, and they say, I'm not interested at all. And I don't know why you keep calling me your best friend. <laughs> Scratch it off. You're like, huh. So you go to the wacky person that's always selling stuff out of catalogs in the, in the uh, snack room at the office. 
and say, hey, wacky person, they say, yeah, I think you're crazy. I'm in love with my wacky stuff. Get out of here. Number two doesn't work. You go to your brother. Is this going to work? No. You get really clingy now. It starts getting ugly. So you go to the fourth person, that neighbor that you heard might want to do something, and the neighbor says, not with you. <laughs> so you're left with one more scratch off on the lotto ticket and you go, mom, please, just be my customer something. Take me out of loser status. Mom says, I told you piano lessons was the last time. I'm not doing it again. And people think this, the business is over now. They went through this, it's over. They went with this huge, needy, greedy approach. Everybody said no. Guess why most of you are in this room right now? One of your five said yes. That's why you're here. And then you bought another ticket. One of those said yes. And then you bought another one. And you said okay. And then you, said, then you found this new word, entrepreneur. Oh, I'm a business person now. You didn't start that way. Most of you didn't. You're like, maybe I can get in early. Maybe I can get a snowball start at the top of the mountain. I could push it down the mountain and maybe it'll go. As long as I get my money back, then maybe the upside is going to happen if somebody takes off and makes something happen. Hopefully I can kick back. The money will roll in. It'll be amazing. Right? That's what most people think. So understand as you go down this road, how you approach people and understanding that every person is a doorway, not a destination. Every prospect. Doorway to another world versus a destination. They're a connector to a whole other universe of people that you can never reach. That's how you need to view this. That's why you need to be kind. That's why you need to be careful. That's why you need to have excitement and urgency, but not so much that you're freaking people out. So I want to talk to you about an evolution that's happened uh, recently. I've taught people for many years how to make a phone call and book an appointment. Eight step process. It's in GoPro. How many people have read GoPro? Okay. Wonderful. Then you know about that eight step process. Some of you have worked on it. Some of you are masters of it. Some of you are champions of it. Get somebody on the phone. You're in, listen, I'm in a hurry. Don't have a lot of time. You give them a compliment. You, you invite them direct, indirect, super indirect. You confirm that appointment and you get off the phone. Does it work? Those of you who, do, who have, how many people use that approach? How many people keep your hands up if you agree it works? Absolutely works. But I've learned something. Over the course of the last year, our landscape has changed pretty dramatically in how we communicate on Earth. It's changed. We don't talk on the phone anymore. Rarely. Think about the number of the conversations you've had over the course of the last 10 days and how many of them have been phone conversations and how many have been text conversations. Which is going to win, phone or text? Text. Call your kids, goes to voicemail, 30 seconds later they text you, what do you want? And say, I don't care 
If you are involved in that cyber world, kids, you pick up the phone when your father calls. How's that working out? They trained you to be texters, didn't they? Want to have a conversation with them? You better start texting. So something happened. People aren't picking up the phone anymore. Everybody watches the phone rings right there. They're not doing anything. They watch it ring. Huh, that's interesting. <laughs> Remember before the phone ring? Everybody's, the phone's ringing. The phone's ringing. Somebody answer the phone. Quick, the phone. <laughs> now everybody's, psst, the phone. <laughs> true or not true? So if you're going to teach someone to make a hundred phone calls, what's that experience going to be like? Painful. They're saying nobody's ever home. And when you leave a message, what do people want to know? Is it worth the agony of me having to talk to you by phone to call you back? So something happened in the last nine months. And I used to do these things called blitz days, where you get somebody to, anybody ever done a blitz day? Okay, blitz days are amazing. You get a group of people together, you put some, some uh, flip chart paper up on the wall, and you create a little competition, you say, okay, we're going to see how many appointments we can set. Everybody got your calendar, everybody got your phone, start dialing, let's go. And you go for two, three hours, and you book up everybody's appointments for the next 30 days. And an average person can book, I don't know, five appointments an hour, at least. Call it five appointments an hour by phone. Maybe four if you averaged everybody out because you get a lot of voicemail. A lot of voicemail. And I was doing a, an insanity boot camp this last summer, and we divided everybody up into teams. We're going to do a blitz day for a couple hours. And I had a lady come up to me who was just not happy. She having a little bit of a panic attack. Where is she? She's here. Where is she? Hey, come, will you come up here? Is it too much? Can, want me to come to you? I'll come to you. I'll come to you. Hold on, hold on. I'll come to you. I think I can get through here. All right. How you doing? Oh, I need a mic. You got a mic? Good to see you. All right. So she comes up to me in tears. She's having like a full-on panic attack. She said, you divided me up. I'm divided on another team from my husband. <gasps> I'm just here to support him. Don't you make me make these phone calls. I just don't. I can't do it. I don't want to let my team down. Right? Yep. So what was going on in your mind when, when, when I divided that up and, and asked people to, to make those calls? Put it up to your mouth close. Just full out fear. I have never had to do that before. I've always been in the supportive role, so doubt of myself and after talking to you and your encouragement. Well, don't go there yet. No? Don't go there yet. <laughs> okay. I just want you to understand this woman knows what she's, she's a, she's a strong woman. She is good wife, good mom, deals with all this life has, has, has uh, faced challenges her whole life. And yet she was really, really afraid. And guess what your brand new person is when you bring them into your business? Very, very afraid. Same exact emotion that she has. So I told her, I said, you know, first of all, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. I am your friend. And if you'd like, go sit with your husband. If you end up booking any appointments, we'll count it towards the other team. She said, no, no, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to book anything over there. But thank you, thank you. Okay, I'll go sit with my husband. I said, if you ever decide, maybe you just want to text a few people. Right? So you sat there for how long during this, this uh, blitz day doing zero? How long was it zero? Probably no time at all. I, so you started, was, you started when she went back? 
once I was able to go and feel like I had my support and I was able to sit with my husband and I was able to start at least trying. Yeah. So she was willing to try if she had a little support. And I gave her a little thing to lean on, which was send out a text and see what happens. So what happened when you did that? The end result? Yeah. I was able to book eight appointments. Eight appointments. Yeah. And how many did you book? Barely uh, nine or ten. I just Huh? Nine or ten. You did nine or ten over the course of three hours, and she did eight. What did that do for your confidence? A lot, actually. I was able to feel like I could put myself out there and talk to some of my friends, at least some of the people that I know a little bit already. So. Now, if I would have said, hey, hey, stand strong, sister, get on the phone. <laughs> what would have the next step been? You would have been in the hotel room, right? I'd have probably taken a two-hour bathroom break. I would have taken a two-hour <laughs> bathroom break. And guess what your brand new distributors do most of the time? They take a two-hour bathroom break and they never come back. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. You know, and they're gone. <laughs> so he was willing to make phone calls. She was willing to send text messages. And they did about the same when it came to appointments. Uh, just out of curiosity, what happened as a result of those appointments? Did any of the ones that you sent up with text uh, become customers or distributors? Uh, a couple of them I'm still talking with. They yep. I opened the door to some of them and we talk, I think a lot of my friends and uh, co-workers didn't maybe know what I was even doing right. in supporting my husband but now they know that what, what I'm into and what I'm interested in so. So you have an easier conversation? Yeah. Sort of Out of the whole experience did you end up signing up any people? Uh, I can't remember. I'd say no, I'll say no to be safe. But, uh, I'll uh, say no to be yeah, safe? Yeah, to, to be honest. <laughs> But she, we work as a team, so she often opens the door now, and then she says, okay, Martin, uh, you go talk to so-and-so now. So, so the next step is to, to, is to teach her how she can do a presentation and have a different kind of power than he can have, right? That's the next step. So here's what I want you to understand. Thank you, by the way. You're delightful. Thank you. Here's what I want you to understand. Every brand new person on your team is scared to death. Every brand new person on your team doesn't know how they're going to do this. Every person is freaking out. So, that was evolution number one, conversation with her and seeing that she would at least take some action. Evolution number two, I did a large leadership event for about 4,000 people for a company. And I wanted to do a blitz day, but it was just impossible to do, to divide it up amongst the whole group. So I had them do a text message. I said, everybody in the room, I want you to text two, three people right now. And when you have an appointment, I want you to stand up. Well, within 10 minutes, the whole room was standing, 4,000 people. I was like, hmm. So then I, I tested it and tested it and tested it because I don't want to put anything out to you that isn't tested a lot. So I've tested it a lot of different directions and here's what I've come to the conclusion. To set an appointment, text is better. Text is better. And I'm going to tell you why and how text is better. Here's your boss in network marketing. You think you don't have one, you actually do. your calendar, your schedule of appointments, what it is that you're doing. Are you meeting with people? Are you sharing the opportunity with people? Are you busy or are you just pretending to do business? Are you playing that you're doing business or do you have an actual schedule of appointments when you're in front of somebody that can make a decision that would affect your business? What I teach people to do now, a couple things, and we're actually going to do this tomorrow. I'm going to wait till tomorrow morning, and we're going to do a text blitz day, the largest one on planet Earth. We're going to book more appointments in this room in one hour than maybe have been booked in this country in a month. Whatever the number is in here, 7,000, 7,500 people, 
I think we'll average about seven appointments per person, maybe eight appointments per person. So what is that? Uh, 60,000 appointments will be booked in one hour, and I'll show you the power of how this works. But here's what I've come to understand. And one, it's, e it's easier. Can you learn how to tell somebody you're in a hurry, how to compliment them, direct, indirect, super indirect, confirm the appointment, okay, I'll see you there? Yes, you can. You can learn all that. I can teach it to you. Will most people do it? No. And if they try, they're not going to reach a lot of people. So one, it's easier. Two, it's more effective. If you call 100 people, how many people are going to answer the phone on average? What do you think? 10, 20, 25, 30? Let's say it's 30. We'll answer the phone. You send a text to that same 100 people. How many of those 100 will respond to your text? 80? 80? So just on effectiveness, as far as getting in front of somebody in a way that works in their schedule, they might be talking with somebody else, they might be doing something, but they could still shoot your message back, hey, what's up? So it's effective. It duplicates. Here's what you could do with a brand new person. A person joins your business today. While you're sitting with them, you can have them send 10 text messages before you leave. And here's all the message has to be. What's your schedule look like the next few days? I'd love to talk. Coffee? Question mark. Are you free? Are you available? Question mark. That's it. Send it out there. If they say, yeah, sure, you know, uh, I'd love to get together. And then you could set the time, Starbucks, I'll meet you tomorrow morning. Then you could tell them, hey, fantastic. I've got something I'd like to share with you. I've got a project that I'm working on. I'd like to get your idea. Whatever, you could talk about what you're doing then. You don't need to give them, hey, the name of my company, the first text. The name of my company is XYZ Company, and we have a revolutionary product, and we're in a billion-dollar market, and we have the compensation plan that ends all compensation plans don't need to do all that stuff. Your job is to, is to schedule an appointment. To say, appointment scheduled. And then you're going to sit down and you're going to tell the story. I'm going to talk about presenting later, what you're going to say in these presentations. But here's the biggest point. If we can get everybody to get a, appointments scheduled, we're on our way. We have a start. So here's the biggest thing for new people. You're sitting down with a brand new person and you have them send 10 text messages to the 10 best prospects they have to see if they can get together. Before you leave them, they will have three, four, five confirmations and they'll be walking on top of the clouds. They'll be saying, I can do this. Oh my gosh, I've got five appointments already. And you can tell that brand new person, listen, you set up the appointments, I'll come help you with the presentation. You don't need to stress about it, worry about it. You know, we'll work on that thing together. Or if you can't do that, you can give them some coaching on what they can say, how they can tell the story, how they can move it forward. So here's what I want you to imagine. If we split the room right down the middle, bang. This side has the getting started process that you have right now, whatever it is. This side, every single person sends 10 text messages to set up an appointment. Which side is going to have more success? It's not even a question. Which side is going to have more confidence, more encouragement, more traction, more duplication, more growth, more development, more excitement? These guys are, just from that one simple little thing. Now I could tell what if we just did this? All of you, we sit with that person and you make 10 phone calls. And this group sends 10 text messages. Who's going to win? They are. So I'm a student of what works, not just what sounds good. 
I'm telling you, test this inside, the, inside your group. This flat works. Number two, so new people, this works incredibly well. The other thing that you're going to find out tomorrow as we do it, objections don't really show up. They just don't show up. On the phone, people just get really out of their depth really fast and they get stumble around and they get embarrassed. They start saying too much. They start blah, 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 blah. And it sets up a strange dynamic. The text doesn't do that. For new people, I think a 10 text strategy is a good strategy day one. The first day that they're involved, sit with them while they do it and watch them come back, bling, 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 bling. They'll be super excited. For existing people, here's what I would do if I was you. Once a month, at the beginning of every month, I would get my whole team together or I would connect with them virtually, have everybody get everybody together on the first Saturday or whatever it is, first day of the month and have everybody on the team send out 50 text messages or something in that range for the month and take December and fill December with appointments before they realize, wait, it's the holidays. It's full of appointments of just getting together with people and telling the story. December's done before it even starts. Imagine if you have a team of 100 people that each send 50 text messages. By, on average, you're going to have somewhere between 20 and 25 appointments out of those 50 text messages. 20 to 25 appointments. And you'll see the results tomorrow, so you'll be able to see that this is real. 20 to 25 appointments. Imagine everybody on your team schedules 25 appointments for December. How's your December going to be? Great! Then the 1st of January, get everybody together again, send another 50 text messages. 1st of February, do it again, fill the calendars of everybody in the team. 1st of March, do it again, April, May, June. Do that for 12 months and your life will never be the same. Just that one little simple strategy. Get everybody on the team on the same page, fill the calendar. And as we go through this process, we'll get better and better and better at telling the story. I'll prove this to you in the morning, but I want you to see this now because it's powerful. It's powerful. Tomorrow I'm going to ask you to do it. So don't start doing it now because you're going to want to save some of those for the morning. We'll do it in the morning and it's going to be fun, I promise. It's going to be a blast. But on average, I believe we'll average about seven appointments per person in this room average and you'll get to see how it all works okay back to this our job is to help people understand and to educate understand and to educate you're not emotionally attached every prospect is a doorway not a destination text is better we're going to fill up a calendar like crazy over the course of the next 30 days, starting tomorrow morning. The text message is easier, more effective. It duplicates. New people can get off to a quick start and build some confidence. Existing people can do a monthly program in order to fill every single person's calendar, and their productivity is going to go through the roof. All right. I know it's a real challenge to get a meal and to get back here with this big of a group. So we're going to finish a little bit early for this afternoon session.